Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Mr. Wiz here. Glad to have you back. If you are new to this channel, we build video games. I just finished a series where we did a, a whole bunch of lessons on building games in Make Code Arcade. If you're new to Make Code Arcade and you want to build games, I would definitely check that out. Right now, we are in the middle of a series where we're doing a deep dive into the Make Code Arcade extensions, which allow us to make our games more professional. So we've already done several and there's a whole lot more to go. So definitely make sure you're subscribed to this channel if you're not already. Today, we're going to look at the Corgio extension. I'll be honest, I was tempted to skip this one, but you know, I told you guys I was gonna do a deep dive on these extensions, so that's exactly what we're doing. This is not my favorite extension. So we're gonna go ahead and take a look at it. In the extensions section, the Corgio one is this one right here. It just the description just says a Corgi platformer. So basically what this extension does is it allows you to make a platformer game where the player is a Corgi. It's supposed to be a Mario style game. In theory, that sounds very cute and very fun. Um, unfortunately, in my experience, this extension seems to be pretty buggy. So every time I've tried to use it, I've eventually given up and just built my own sprites instead. That's basically all this is. This is an extension that creates the sprite for you that you can use. So let's take a look at it. Once you download it, it adds it as a t uh, option in your toolbox right here. And these are the blocks that are available. So you have the one that creates the sprite and then you have some things that can adjust it. And most of these you're going to need. And then some of these are honestly like the speak section. I don't even think this works. I've never been able to get this to work correctly. If you can get this to work, please put in the comments how it works because it, it's never worked for me. Okay, so let's take a look at this. So first thing we gotta do is go ahead and create the player. So it's named my Korg. Of course, you could change that name if you want to, but there's no reason to. And it is set up as a Corgi of kind player. And if you press behind it, this lets you set the position of where it spawns on the screen. By default, it spawns on the left-hand side of the screen because this is intended to be a platformer side-scrolling style game. All right, so we're going to keep going. After you create it right now, it doesn't do anything because it doesn't have any controls. So if I press the arrow keys, nothing's happening. In order to make your character work, you do have to give it the make move left and right with arrow keys block. And you can set um, this to on or off. I thought it had an ability to set the speed, but I guess it doesn't. So we'll go ahead and take that, take a look at that. Now the character does move left and right. It does not move up or down, just left and right, like a standard platformer game. However, it's not moving like we would want it to, so that would mean that we'd have to use this block, change image when my Corgi is moving. And again, this has an on-off switch that you can adjust if for some reason you wanted this to only work for part of the game. So now I've got a Corgi that does move, and as I mentioned, it's pretty cute. It's a cute little sprite. I can definitely see the appeal. If this wasn't such a buggy extension, I would have definitely built a game with it. All right, so... There's also a block here to make it jump if the arrow key is pressed. So this game does not do a jump with spacebar. It only has jump with arrow key. So this is my first negative about this extension is it doesn't give you much room to edit and get creative with it. I like extensions where you can use them in multiple different ways and you can edit them when you need to. Um, but this, you know, it doesn't just say make Corgi jump. If it just said make Corgi jump, then I could decide when to make that happen, right? I could put it in an A button press, I could put it in an up arrow press, but this is pre-built to only work with the arrow key. And once again, I can turn this on or off, but not any other options here. Just like the arrow keys didn't let me change the speed, this doesn't let me change anything other than just turning it on or off. So now he's moving left and right and he can also jump. So we've got a left and right, and we got a jump. In fact, we actually have a double, triple jump here, it looks like. So it can jump multiple times. All right. Down below that, we have the make camera follow. So this is going to be important if you're doing a large map. We need the camera to follow the Corgi. Of course, right now I don't have a map, so that's not really important. These two blocks, as I mentioned, make Corgi bark and teach Corgi the word bark. I have been very unsuccessful in using these two blocks. I, I can't quite figure out how they're supposed to work. I've tried putting it on a button press. I've tried, uh, you know, other things, and I can't ever seem to get these to work. Down here, properties. Here's where we can start to change some of the properties 
of the Corgi. So horizontal speed is to be the left right movements. I can adjust that. So if I didn't, you know, I think 100 is usually the standard speed. That's actually a little bit faster than it was moving before. So I guess they must have been using something other than 100. But you could adjust it here. They've got gravity. So how fast does the character fall when they jump? We've got jump speed, which will affect how high he can jump, right? So 100 is not very high in this game. And then we have max jumps in a row. This I kind of appreciate because their character does have double jump and triple jump. You can adjust how many jumps they're allowed to do in a row. But even this has been buggy for me. So if I do one, you would think that would mean that I can't double jump at all. That I just have single jumps. But that's not true. I still have a double jump. See that? So it's no longer triple, but it's not one. So this block is also kind of buggy. Um, rate horizontal movement is slowed. I've never used that. I guess that would have to do with like drag. Um, but yeah, I've never had a need to use that. So this is it. It's pretty straightforward. It's pretty simple. The idea behind this extension is just to make it easier to build a side-scrolling platformer game. But like I said, I can't use A to jump. I can only use up, left, and right. So one negative, as I mentioned, is the fact that you can't customize it very much. The other negative that I've had with this is that it doesn't work well with platformer games. So let me give you, show you an example. The Mario game that we built a while back, I'm going to make a copy of it because I don't want to change the original. So I'm going to go to, if you didn't catch this, I just went to view all for my projects, clicked on the Mario game, and I'm going to hit duplicate. And I'm going to change the name here to Corgio Game. All right. This will allow me to edit it without changing my original Mario game. So this is the game that I made in that lesson. And I've done a lot of edits to it recently. In fact, in the scale assignment, or I'm sorry, in the scale video, I added the cake here to make you bigger. So this is the game right now with the Mario character we made. Now, he doesn't have any animations yet, simply because I haven't done that, but it would be pretty easy to do that with the animation extension we've already learned about. And then that makes him bigger, just like it's supposed to, and all that jazz. So, yeah. What I'm going to do is I'm going to replace him with the Corgi. So here's the stuff that has to do with my sprite. We'll go ahead and delete all this. This gives this creates the player, this gives him gravity, this has a camera follow, and it gives him movement controls, which is all stuff we can do with the Corgi. So let's just see how well this converts to a tile map game. So I'm going to put the Corgi in there. I'm going to give him left-right controls. I'm going to give him jump with arrow key. I'm going to change his image when moving so he has the animation. I'm going to make the camera follow him. So I'm using all those basics. I don't really have to worry about the rest of this. Now I do have to look at my code to make sure anything that says my sprite I fix. So right here when the A button press is when he's supposed to jump. Um, actually, let's try something. Can I put my Korg in there? and use the A button press to jump for Corgi. Let's check it out. So right now, all right, so first thing you're gonna notice, you see that little skipping, little jumping? The animation is not working very good with the tile maps. I have never had that problem with any other sprites. Okay, A does work, but it doesn't jump the way that it did with the air, up arrow. So with, uh, no, it does, it does it the same. Okay, so I guess you could use regular jumping. You could code your own jumping. Oop, I got an error when it touched the, ch the treasure chest. Do I have something in the treasure chest that uses my sprite? Yes, right there, my sprite. Okay, so let's change that to player. All right. Anything else in the code that uses my sprite? I just want to fix that real quick so we can test this properly. Right here it says my sprite. We'll switch that with the player sprite. 
Anything else? All right, here where it sets it in a particular place, we can just set this to the Corgi, my Korg. Okay, I think I got them all. All right, so let's test it out with the Corgi. So we got a little bug with the walking animation. Doesn't seem to work very well with the tiles. Does the treasure chest work? Treasure chest works still. Okay. And it looks like the scale worked. All right, cool. So it's not a terrible extension. It's just, as I mentioned, seems to be a little bit buggy and it doesn't give you a lot of flexibility with creativity. All right. And then I go to the next level and it spawns my new one. Oh, it didn't spawn it on top of the, it didn't spawn it in the right area. It spawned me there instead of at the beginning of the map, which would be back here. It should have spawned me right here. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know why I did that. So that's basically it. Not a lot to show you with this extension. It's pretty straightforward. The benefit of it is that you have a pre-made character that looks kind of cute. The negative of it is that it does tend to be buggy and it doesn't give you a lot of flexibility to edit things that you might normally want to edit. All right, so I'll stop this video now and then I'll see you with the next extension, which will probably be darts. Woohoo, fun times. All right, if you learned something new today, please click that like button. If you're not already subscribed, please subscribe. And if you did make a cool Corgi program, I want to see it. Click that share button up here, copy the link, share your project, copy the link, put it in the comments so that I can check out your Corgi game. All right, I'll see you guys next time.